Hey cats, it's Ed Midsoul Bud here. Today I have for you a top five list of my best daily running shoes of 2022. I've had a chance to test out a whole bunch of shoes this year. Here are some of the models I think are most equipped for daily use. Let's get to it. Thanks for tuning in people, it's always appreciated. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, click the bell below for notifications. Also, really helps the channel out if you give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. Danke schön. A volley of shoe goodness for you today. My top five daily running shoes of 2022. By daily, I mean a shoe that ticks lots of boxes for the shoe rotation. Let's get straight into the action, no messing. Just outside my top five, I have a worthy contender that didn't quite make it, the Vomero 16 from Nike. This one's a bit of a zombie shoe, a little bit like the Tempo Next Percent. They just keep on knocking out new colorways of it. It never seems to go away, and that's a good thing. I really enjoyed the cushion that we had here from that SR02 carrier foam, giving it a bit of durability, and then the straight out Zoomex core throughout. A really great outsole on the Vomero 16 as well, and I feel that it's worthy of a place just outside of that top five. It was released in 2021 but they're still knocking out loads of pairs so i think it's a worthy inclusion there it is a little bit weightier than some of today's shoes in the list and also a bit more expensive as well so that's why i've left it out okay starting with position number five we have the asics nova blast 3 a touch lighter than the v2 and the v1 i felt that the nova blast 3 had a better upper fit and it was a shoe that i grabbed from the shelf a little more often certainly more padded and slightly plusher certainly around the achilles area lacing is more on point than both other iterations of the shoe i found myself liking the flight foam blast plus material here though the change in the midsole compound does make for a slightly different animal a little bit firmer this time a little bit more responsive not that quicksand squash that we had certainly in the v1 you don't feel like you're collapsing into the heel quite so much in the nova blast 3 now that might be great for you but not so great for everybody else if they kind of wanted a continuation of what that line originally had in terms of functionality though i think that that change makes this shoe a bit of a better daily driver a swiss army shoe of sorts you could perhaps even do some some more faster paced training in this one that's not really something that i wanted to do in the nova blast original i have placed it into position five though due to the slightly poor traction in wet or slippery conditions so in the list at position five is the nova blast 3 from a6 talking of traction coming in at position four is the velocity nitro 2 from puma an update to Puma's daily shoe from last year, and they got everything right in this one. Great traction from that Puma grip on the outsole. Oh, I mean, just take a butcher's at that, eh? A much better upper than last year's model. There's a little bit less of it, but it's still plush enough, certainly around the heel area. And we still get those Nike SB style laces. Very odd inclusion, but they seem to work. It's pretty light by daily shoe standards, and you can often find this one discounted below 75 Earth credits here in the UK. That's pounds if you couldn't work that out. I think that's a great price, really, for what you're getting here in terms of quality. The nitro foam hits the spot in terms of a daily driver, but then you do have a slightly firmer, more responsive EVA slab underneath that nitro. So it's not a squash vest by any suggestion. An ideal combo combo for a daily trainer and you get two different versions of this there's the standard and then the more sustainable first mile again it just ticks lots of boxes and a very usable shoe for your rotation at position four it's the velocity nitro 2 from puma sometimes nike really hit the spot with their pegasus model and in 2022 they did just that with the pegasus 39 an upper profile that was closer to the better models of a few years back the outsole a triumph of rubber lugs and traction they still know how to knock out a good outsole nike even used it on some lighter trails and it came through with flying colors well perhaps it wasn't that good but it was all it was all right it was serviceable i kind of like that you still get a nice smooth feel when you're using it on road the lugs aren't that large that it just feels odd underfoot get that with some models it just feels like there's a little bit too much rubber there not in the pegasus 39 though the midsole is still reactive but it did feel like a slightly softer formula this time around and we do get two air units one in the heel and one in the fore some people reckon that they couldn't feel those but i'm not entirely sure that they've 
ever used Nike shoes before that had air units because it feels exactly like the others. As I say, this felt a little softer to my feet. Certainly when we had a very firm 37, the 38 took a bit of tenderizing, but this one felt pretty good straight out of the box. I racked up loads of miles in this one very quickly earlier this year. I'd say it's a great daily shoe, just a bit of everything. It can kind of handle most stuff. I wouldn't run up an incredibly muddy hill in it, but there's other shoes for that, right? Works on most surfaces though, and it's not really a master of everything. It's a jack of all trades. I think at that magic 110 Earth credit price, although often discounted, it's a really good deal. That's why I've positioned it over the ASICS Nova Blast 3 and the Velocity Nitro 2. I just found there's better performance here at a variety of different paces. I found a slightly wider pace range was more achievable in the Pegasus 39. Not sure I'd choose the other two for a more tempo-like workout, but you could probably get away with it in this one. At position 3, it's the Pegasus 39. At position 2, I've got the fantastic Reebok Float Ride Energy 4. A top-notch daily blaster, the super cheapest chips float ride Energy 4. This one again does lots of things well for me. Easy paced recoveries, daily mooching. And it even has this stack and compression here for me to wear them when I'm doing musical performances, standing up for like two and a half, three hours. Always leaves my legs feeling good. I mean, what more do you want for 75 Earth credits? It's even lighter as well than last year's model. Great upper fit in the Energy 4 with really good toe box room. And I'm talking length, I'm talking width, I'm talking height. Spot on cushion from the midsole here. It's not too compressive, but there's lots of flexibility here as well in the shoe, which is something that you want from a daily model. Don't want something that's too rigid. I do think that full length rubber outsole though does provide a little bit of control. A very capable shoe from Reebok this one, and I'm seeing more and more people picking them up and enjoying them. I've even bought a pair of these for one of my family members for Christmas. It's proved to be an extremely usable running shoe and lifestyle option as well. Another top-notch model in the Energy lineup. So at position number two is the Energy 4 from Reebok. So we're at the top spot, what could it be? Let me know your top daily shoes from this last year down in the comments. For me, it's gonna be the shoe that many people don't classify as a daily shoe, but I do. The awesome Adidas Adi Zero Adios 7. Lighter and a more fitting upper than last year's model. They've removed little bits here and there, but left the core brilliance of the shoe intact. What a colorway as well. It's absolutely fantastic unless you do that to it. I found this one awesome at easy to steady pace and any pace really, to be honest with you. I think that's what makes it so good. You know, it's a realistic price as well. It's around about 120 Earth credits, often discounted though. I don't think you'd have to look too far to find it below 100. A brilliant mix of firm yet forgiving foams. That makes it for me the best daily shoe I've used over the last year. It's the type of shoe that you can wear when you've got no set pace or session in mind. The best shoe for running when you simply just want to have fun. When there's no barrier set, in fact you've taken the barrier down and taken it to the dump and you just say, I'm going to go out and run and enjoy myself. Dynamite on even icy roads. Even the Pen Mill trading estate's no match for this beast. I think it's also one for the traditionalists out there. It's got quite a nice low profile, old school meets super shoe combo. I mean, why would you want a mass of foam underfoot and this really plush upper for your daily shoe? If you're just running shorter distances within your training, this one's for you. I certainly don't need all that extra foam. I found myself reaching for those slightly more responsive shoes, things that are just the minimum. That's what I need these days. So the Adios 7 from Adidas is my top daily shoe for 2022 just ticks all the boxes for me let me know your most used daily shoe of 2022 down in those comments time for a quick musical interlude around christmas time you kind of get sentimental and remember some great things and perhaps some not so great things that have happened to you i can remember a particular christmas when i was listening to this tune loads and loads it really spoke to me and that's lonely this christmas by mud i love the sort of fake elvis vibes going on in this one some really great vocal harmonies as well to sort of back up the very sentimental lyrics you got the guy trying to imagine 
a house that's not a home. He's facing Christmas uh, completely on his own. Perhaps he was going to have to get some sort of takeout food or something. This one's got so many memories for me hearing it when I was a young lad. I used to listen to the radio with my tape recorder and try and record all of my favourite tunes. When they would come on, I'd quickly unpause. I even got to a point where I was using a reel-to-reel -reel recorder to actually edit the bits out where people were speaking over the top of the tracks. I think that was round about the time when I had a speaker downstairs and I used to do a radio show for my mum. She used to put a dishcloth over the speaker at one point when I was playing particularly irritating early techno tracks. Getting back to Mud though, I really like the guitar work in this track. Very subtle and the bass, I think though electric, they've played it like a stand-up to give it that old school 50s doo-wop vibe. Go and check this one out guys, a fantastic traditional Christmas tune, I suppose, from Mud, Lonely This Christmas. Whenever I hear the spoken word bit of this track, I always think of my drummer, The Mystery Man, wearing his gold lame jacket and he used to stand up with a microphone and do that bit when we used to play it. It was uh, good fun. Thanks for tuning in, people. It is always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button and tinkle the bell for notifications. Give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.